Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Mondays with Michelle video. This week's topic, conscientious objectors, those individuals who, for moral or religious reasons, did not wish to bear arms. We'll explore various websites and discuss what records are available to shed light on their experiences in World War I, once compulsory conscription was introduced. Let's get started. So the first website I wanted to show you is the National Archives. They do have a guide on searching for conscientious objector records. And for those of you that might not be familiar with the term, these were the individuals who in wartime um, were not wanting to serve and their objection could be on the basis of religious beliefs. You will find in tribunal records all kinds of cases pertaining to individuals who were in occupations that were deemed critical to the war effort or to the country. So they would be exempted from service on those grounds. But when most people think of the conscientious objectors, it is those individuals whose personal beliefs meant they were not um, wanting to serve in an active military role. So there is this guide on the National Archives. There are some records that are online through the National Archives, specifically the Middlesex Military Service Appeal Tribunal records. And if you click on this search the tribunal records, you come to this particular screen where you can search by name or you can just click search. When you put in the search criteria, you will come to a screen like this. And if we scroll down, you will see, in addition to these general categories of records, which you can click on and browse, you also come up with specific details of individual cases. So one of the ones I looked at was this Sydney Thornhill Tracy. If we click Sydney Thornhill Tracy, it comes to this detail screen, which gives you a summary. And it's one of the records that you can download for free. And I actually did download his record and what's interesting, this is not the military attestation file. So this is all of the correspondence between the tribunals that were set up to hear appeals. And there are 110 pages to this person's file. And this is a typical example. So what you are going to see is copies of letters or forms that are arguing why this person should or shouldn't be exempted. And you notice in this case, they're arguing that they should be exempted and here's all the reasons and the army has written refused. In other words, nope, they are not going to accept the appeal for exemption. So what I found really interesting, just by looking at the details of all of these letters, you might see letters or supporting documentation from their employer. You will find details about the circumstances of their family life because it will say things like three brothers already serving. This is the sole surviving son. He is the only means of support for his widowed mother. So there is an awful lot of useful background information you can get. And as I said, I just paged through some of this information and it does help 
paint the picture of who this individual is, what they were doing, and as I said, you've got 110 pages of information. There are bound to be some great genealogical details in there. Now, if we take a look at just browsing one of the categories. So this MH4767 is the category for non-attested conscientious objector case papers. And by clicking on it, what I'm seeing down the right here are all the individual cases. And you notice for grounds of appeal, there's different letters of the alphabet. This is grounds of appeal A, grounds of appeal F. F was usually the conscientious objectors, the grounds of appeal either for religious reasons or they, you know, they weren't comfortable bearing arms. Some of the other letters of the alphabet would be things like restricted occupations that were essential to the war effort. So what I like about these files, it's not just those who refuse to fight on religious grounds, it's those who for various reasons wanted to be exempted from conscription. So you may find your ancestors in these tribunal uh, minutes or in these case papers. And if your ancestor never did a test, if they never actually completed the paperwork and instead went the appeal process first, these documents might have information that will shed light on their occupation, on the family circumstances. So it's worth looking at. And you can see all these different categories. They've been divided up. These are the ones, the appeals of men who did a test. Then we've got the appeals from men who didn't fill out the attestation papers. So again, it's worth looking through some of these categories to see what you can find. Now, when I searched in the Family Search website and did a catalog search, I tried searching in a number of ways. I searched on the words military tribunals because that seemed to come up with a lot more entries than doing a search on conscientious objector. You'll notice we've got some information on Hampshire, Portsmouth. There are some American records. There's an entry for Wiltshire. We've got entries for different countries. So again, it depends on what you use as a search term. Again, I did search on conscientious objectors. One of the interesting items, they have a book about conscientious objectors in the American Civil War. So this isn't just World War I, World War II. So for anyone doing American research, this is the Civil War 1861 to 1865 draft resistors. If we look at what Find My Past has in their catalog, they also have the same Northamptonshire military tribunals. They've got Hampshire. They have some for Surrey and some for Middlesex. So there are some records and you notice they are coming up when you search on military tribunal. When I searched on conscientious objector, nothing came up. So again, it's knowing what the search terms are. Now, with Find My Past, what I thought was interesting when I looked at the Northamptonshire military tribunals 
It talks about each result will give a transcript of the information and a link will be provided to the archives website where you can order the original. So in this situation, unlike what I showed you on the National Archives website, you are not actually getting access to a digitized image of the tribunal records. You are getting a transcript only. And this is what a typical entry would look like. Here's an entry for Albert Edward Abbott. And so it does give you a lot of useful information. You get his occupation, where he was living, his age, the reason for the appeal, the date the decision was made, and whether they accepted his appeal or dismissed it. In this case, they dismissed it. And there's some notes, and this is the link to be able to order that document or to know who has the originals of that document. So you'd have to go to the Northamptonshire Record Office to find that information. The other place where you might find these military tribunal records is at the local archives. So we've previously looked at the NICRO website, North Yorkshire County Record Office. So I clicked to search the online catalog and I typed in military tribunal and I got 20 entries. And if I click on any of these entries, I will see the detailed description of what that entry has. And when I clicked on the entry for Thomas Featonby, even though this is just their description, it's just a summary, you are getting most of the useful information. So if you look, it is giving all of the grounds that he used for his appeal. So he used a multi-pronged approach. He tried to appeal on the grounds of serious hardship, uh, conscientious objection, and that he was in an exempt occupation. And they very kindly give a summary of the case. And then it says the local tribunal dismissed the original appeal and giving the reasons. And it says, yes, there is supporting evidence. And so the date of this new appeal is given and it says it was dismissed. So even though I am not looking at the original papers because NICRO has given such a complete description. I can get a lot of information from this and then contact the North Riding um, archives to see if there's a way I can get the original documents. So again, it's well worth looking at the local archives, searching under conscientious objector or searching under military tribunals, because that's what they called these local um, appeal courts, if you will, that were set up to hear the requests for exemption. The other place you will find information is in the local newspapers, although you will not always find that your ancestor's name is mentioned. So those individuals who may have been imprisoned because of their refusal to bear arms, and especially if they had filled out attestation paperwork and then were sanctioned by the military for refusing to carry out 
a direct order if they were imprisoned. Those individuals, you probably stand a better chance of actually having them named in the newspaper because it was very much the naming and the shaming. What I have found looking um, at a lot of the newspaper clippings, they will discuss the military tribunals, but it'll be more like this article here, where it's talking about these were the cases that came up, and this case is Westminster Tribunal. But you notice it gives occupation, age, it will discuss um, the reasons for the request. It might even give quotes of personal testimony. But what I found a little frustrating, they stopped short of actually naming the individual. So in some cases, you may be able to figure out if one of these individuals was your ancestor just because there is a lot of other information given. But unfortunately, in many cases, they are not naming people. So that could be why if you are just doing a name search, you may not find your ancestor in the newspapers, but it might be worthwhile searching on tribunal or, you know, Huddersfield tribunal or Hull tribunal or military tribunal. That's what I searched on to get these articles. I actually did a search with the subject of military tribunal to get this particular record. So, some other websites that are really useful. This one called Men Who Said No is focused on the conscientious objectors in the UK and their story. So this is the main page of the website. You have a number of links across the top here. This gives not only great background information, but there's actually a lot of biographical information about many of the individuals who objected. So if we take a look at some of the other links, there is this resistance map. And I found that was really interesting because if you look at the um, legend here below the map, so it's showing the sites of some of the prisons where these conscientious objectors were held. And it's showing those areas where there was a lot of resistance, a lot of conscientious objectors. Um, it's showing sites of graves, of memorials, um, areas where there were a lot of conscientious objectors. So I found that was quite interesting. This link here, which is the actual men who said no, the names. So you have a little video here, but if you scroll to the bottom, they have images and an alphabetic list of conscientious objectors. And if I click on the R's, there are two Rentons. And if you click on Ernest Yeoman, unfortunately for the two Rentons that are in here, there's not a lot of biographical information. So there is some basic information given on the right. For some of the individuals, there is quite a lot of information available. So that's an interesting resource. Uh, some of the other pages on the website talks about how some of these conscientious objectors were sent to France and sentenced to death as a way of trying to convince them to bear arms. So these would have been the individuals who did fill out 
attestation papers who had joined the army and they may have been put into non-combatant roles, but the army was determined to force them one way or another to bear arms. So these are the names of the 35 individuals who were shipped over to France and sentenced to death. And I think for most of them, they ended up being sent back to England and imprisoned because uh, the army had kind of gone rogue with that plan. The British government got wind of it and very quickly made arrangements to have these conscientious objectors brought back to England and basically imprisoned rather than being um, put to death. This page here is the context link. It's this link here. You come up with all of these different direct links to pages on the website with information. And a couple links that I thought were interesting. There is a link I'll show you in a moment to this broadsheet or newspaper called the Tribunal, which was a way for those who were trying to support the conscientious objectors, they would actually publish news and um, information about what was happening with the conscientious objectors and with the movement against conscription. And here is a sample. You can actually see the extracts from the newspapers and see some digital images. So they actually included obituaries on some of the conscientious objectors who died. The Imperial War Museum also has some good resources. You get not only some background information, but there are audio clips of interviews with individuals who were conscientious objectors. So that's interesting. They also have some examples of artwork and posters and some of the people's stories from World War I. And again, some background information. Now, this is another site, English Heritage. Again, some really good information talking about the tribunal system, talking about the Northern non-combatant corps where a lot of the individuals from Yorkshire, and you'll see the term the Richmond 16, um, they were incarcerated at Richmond Castle, and some of those were in the group that were sent over to France, read out sentences of being condemned to death as a way to coerce them to bear arms. Um, so there's some really interesting stories of those individuals. And it's important to note the same thing was happening everywhere. It wasn't just in the UK. So this is the Canadian War Museum website and their information on conscientious objectors. There is also this Active History Canadian website, which is again talking about Canada's World War I experience and how conscientious objectors fit into that whole mix. You'll find sometimes information will show up in some of those specific archives. So here we have the Mennonite Archival Information Database. And this has information both for Canada and the US 
of conscientious objectors. And there are pictures, there are documents. So here we've got information from a camp in Ontario. Here we have a conscientious objectors camp baseball team in British Columbia. So there's all kinds of documents. Um, some of these pictures actually list names. So this particular one, it identifies who's in the picture. So if you do have relatives who would have been in some of these conscientious objector camps in the States or in Canada, it's worthwhile searching out some of these archives. You may find pictures of your ancestors, as you see in some of these here. This is the Auckland Museum website for New Zealand. And they have all kinds of information on conscientious objectors. They also have a database with the names of 220 conscientious objectors that have been added to their online cenotaph database. And I clicked on that link and I came to this particular page. I just searched on Norman Robert Alderson. And so what we have here is extracts from their service record. So if we scroll down, it's giving various bits of information, but at the bottom here, so it says he was imprisoned twice for disobedience, refusing to take possession of Kit. He pleaded not guilty. He was sentenced to imprisonment with hard labors. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Don't forget to download the handout. You'll find the link in the video description at the bottom of your screen. You may need to click more to see the handout links. Thanks for watching.